but I lost it. <laughs> I am losing it. It's, praise the Lord, another day. Better drink some coffee. Take me along the way. You know, I enjoy having the time off that I take once a week to rest. I, I literally don't do anything. I just rest because <laughs> I'm getting old. <laughs> I think I've gotten to a place where I recognize that, you know, God may have been able to do all these things, you know, and he took one day off and rested that, you know, other people may take a day off and go do their own thing like, oh, I don't know. They may call it church or they may go to, you know, study or they may do some other thing on a day of rest that they want to do, like yard work or some other thing that they say relaxes them. Me? <laughs> I rest. Uh, sometimes I just need to, like, take another nap, <laughs> get some extra sleep, because sometimes my days go, you know, 12-hour days or... Sometimes they're broken up into longer days, but, you know, spaced out in some way that there's a portion of work and then maybe take a break for a few minutes and then go on to something else and then come back to it. And basically it always winds up being about 12 hours in, in sharing and caring and doing those things that I feel are needed because we live in the latter days and that we need to maybe cast off the sins that so easily beset us and absorb ourselves into the work that God would have us to do. Which doesn't always have to be that long of hours, but for me it's just needful to get some of the things done that I feel compelled in my life to do. In your life it may be otherwise. And in so saying, whatsoever it is that the Lord tells you to do, that you should do. In daily light, as our devotionals instruct us not because they're written but because God is speaking to us and we apply it as it fits into our life patient and tribulation it is the Lord let him do what seemeth to him good whom though I were righteous whom though I were righteous yet would I not answer but I would make supplication to my judge the Lord gave and the Lord had taken away blessed be the name of the Lord what Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? Jesus wept, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourges every son whom he receives. Now, no chastening for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterwards it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them that are exercised thereby strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness in the world you shall have tribulation but be of good cheer i have overcome the world the christian who says to you god is all light and god is all wonderful and god is all peace and god is all joy and never goes through any trials and tribulations in any type of chastening from him where god literally stomps on him and causes him to maybe question his own faith and his own relationship really isn't much of a friend to be with because a fair weather friend will often be cast aside and need you who is going through tribulation more than you will need them because anyone can be a saint when it's in a saintly environment but do we know how to be the light when we're in the midst of darkness do we know to how to how to have joy in the midst of pain i for one can tell you today i'm not feeling it <laughs> and yet i can laugh about it i can have joy i can have peace i can still be the same person that i am in god though my flesh causes me pain and agony at times and suffering why and how and what is it that makes us different the difference is jesus literally because if he brings it into our life he allows it there to cause something to burst forth from us which might be faith but it also might not be for healing as much as it might be for tenderness I for one know that in all of my trials and tribulations whatever I've gone through I have trusted God to make it real for me so that I would know how to apply it to anyone else that might come to me for counseling or for need
in some ways, some may say, well, isn't that a self-fulfilling prophecy in wanting you to become like unto others in their suffering so that they could be comforted with the same comfort with which you were comforted? And I would say, yeah, because that's what Jesus said. That will show me he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Have faith in God. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shalt not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of him that cometh to God that diligently seek him. He that hath received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it has said, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform. Is anything too hard for the Lord? With God all things are impossible. Lord, increase our faith. The reality of what we don't recognize at times is that God is bigger than we are and of most of what is problems for a Christian is the content of what they try to make God contained in rather than understand that God is greater than our understanding we're told in Proverbs that we're not to lean in our own understanding because he is greater and that we can trust in him with all our heart then he would direct our path so if he's greater than what we understand, then it should be his plan for us to be dependent upon him as he knows the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. It would only be foolish to go our own way and to think that we know what to do and what to say and what to be. The idiosity of humanity is seeking to do it their own way without doing it what God has said to do on a daily basis. So the choices really are up to us. Are we willing to entrust ourselves to God who already knows what we should do? Or are we willing to just say we're talking to God and go our own way and by faith believe that it will be right? I guess the question is how personal and how real is your God and what do you believe in? I believe that Jesus said that we could have as personal intimacy with the Father as he had. And the reason I believe that is because he said it. And because he said it, he did it. And because he did it, he promised it to me. For you, I don't know what you will do. But as for me, I think I like a personal let's Savior. And I definitely like a personal God. Don't you? Thank you.